Hello and welcome everyone to the Changing Landscape webinar. My name is Samantha McLean and I am the Color Marketing Specialist at Lorama. Today we will be discussing how the global events impact trends and colors. But first I have the added pleasure of introducing our very own Andrew Burnett, our CEO at Lorama Group. Thanks, Samantha. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Good day from wherever you are, and I hope you're staying safe and your, your family and all those around you are, are safe and healthy. You know, changing landscape is a appropriate topic uh, for the situation in the pandemic that we're in today. And really, just very quickly, I want to talk about the role that paint plays in in rebuilding lifestyle in that changing landscape. The world as we know it is going to be different as we go forward. And it's going to be important as paint and coatings producers, suppliers, designers, and, and color specialists that we're able to accept that role and participate in it. And for example, here in Canada, one of the things that are, are is being done Color has a special meaning. For example, yellow is the color of hope, and people are broadcasting yellow wherever they can and showing hope against the spread of the virus. Purple is a color for hospitality, and if you're in the hotel industry and services industry, it's being decimated across the world. And so many supporters of the hospitality industry are, are putting up purple. Blue, of course, is the color here in Canada of frontline workers. In the United States, it's red and yellow. In your area, it could be something else. But frontline healthcare workers that every day are dealing with people who are ill and recovering from the virus. And so color be takes on a meaning of how people view the situation. And the interesting thing is for architectural decorative paint, it can bring people together. Families are at home now, self-isolating, practicing physical distance, and they're staring at their walls. And what they stare about, what they stare at, they dream about a new future, something better than what is today, and the memories that they're creating with their families today. And so you have greater increases on searching for paint in general. The interesting thing is, now where markets previously zero VOC didn't matter, today it matters. Because now you can't paint your house and have the ability to leave and vacate for two days while it dries. So you need something that's low order. You need something that's going to be safe for your family to use and, and, and paint with while they're still in the house. And so these type of things that are built into your paint system already will provide you an advantage. But ultimately, what that painting does is, is it inspires confidence. It inspires confidence to decorate our homes. And if we have confidence to decorate our homes and feel good about where we live, then it's gonna spread to confidence in our communities. And we will rebuild our communities with that confidence. So how families decorate, how they're inspired actually does matter. And the paint companies, coating companies worldwide have a role to play in that in rebuilding our lifestyle. Very quickly, two major things during this time that's of importance. And if you look through this presentation, you may be able to find out little nuggets of how to, to work these two properties. The first thing is innovation during crisis. Innovation does not stop. And how you adapt to the crisis will determine how strong your business is when you come out of it. There's two things that you really should focus on at this time. Number one is core competencies. What do you do well? What does your brand do well? What does your paint do well? You focus on those things and you really, really highlight that in the market. Keep in mind, many places, physical stores, physical locations are closed. So people are finding different ways to buy paint online, in depots, or curbside pickup. Are you set up to, to service your customers that way? 
And the longer we go through this pandemic in, in restriction um, environment, many more people will go online. So how do you differentiate your brand, your brand and your product online when everybody else is online? So you really have to understand what it is your market needs, what it is you do well, and focus on that. There's also an internal opportunity, not only for cost savings, which is highly critical for your cash flows and for the strength of your business, but there is an internal component, internal cooperation. Departments that don't typically work together or maybe operations and technical often don't see eye to eye or marketing and technical are constantly trying to battle to, to get the right product. During this time, it's one company and everybody's together. So how your teams pull together, how your marketing and technical interact, how your technical and operations interact to create the overall solution and deliver the product to your customers is important. The other thing, and finally, particularly for color marketers, ensuring that your branding and your marketing campaign matches the product quality. There's nothing worse than going online and promoting and having a wonderful landscape changing presentation and the product has to be applied in 10 coats. That will frustrate the market. So focus on this time in enhanced value. People purchasing online will miss the actual expertise that the people in store provide. So how are you gonna make up that gap? How are you gonna ensure that somebody who's painting their bathroom for the first time really understands what they're doing? They're selecting the right paint, the right quality, and they're getting the performance out of the color that they select. Remember to match the application guidelines with the usage. Those in the position to offer the right colors and the right performance will see their business grow during this time. And not only in this time, but they'll create that brand loyalty with perhaps additional people that they didn't have before. In this time, instant comments will matter. So for your social media campaigns and your online campaigns, make sure that you're keeping up to date with the comments and the instant feedback. Those are going to affect your brand at this particular time. So as our landscape has changed, I hope you will innovate with the times. Lorama is here, and this is why the Color Insights Group has provided this information. We really hope it will be useful for you at this time. And please reach out to us, not only with your formulation needs, your color needs, but also uh, your product and color supply needs that we provide with our own products. So thank you very much for joining this session, and I'll turn it back over to Samantha. Take care and be safe. Thank you, Andrew, for those insights. And that brings us to global events. We are now more connected than ever before, but global events continue to have a large impact on our social landscape. How can we be better prepared? Let's take a look back and find some of those answers. So we've faced difficult times of crisis before. During the Great Depression was one of the most important economic downturns of the 20th century. The decade is not known well for its flourishing economy, successful business endeavors, for the widespread poverty, rationing and suffering during the 1930s as a result of unemployment, drought, and lack of social safety nets, which transformed social welfare. Now I would like to take a moment and ask what colors do you picture when you think of the Great Depression? Do you perhaps imagine bleak colors such as black, colorless tones of gray, or blends of brown? You wouldn't be wrong if you thought of those colors. However, the time was more colorful than photos would have us recall. So color in the Great Depression had many influences that rippled through all levels of financial stability, such as in the textiles industry. Novelty fabrics were cheap and readily available from the previous decade. It is notable for being woven with several colors or made up of clustered prints. 
such as material was important on a practical level as well because the weaves and designs helped hide wear and tear. Within the entertainment industry, we had the addition of sound of movies becoming increasingly popular as a means of escapism, depicting idyllic settings and fabulously dressed characters. Innovative storytelling, which would lead to the transformation of an industry and its impact outside of entertainment, such as in clothing. Advertising mirrored and likely was the cause driving such bright color selections with a goal in mind to encourage individuals to indulge during an era of do without. From the Great Depression, we then lead into World War II, another global event of the 20th century, which was the largest war in history, directly involving more than 100 million people from several countries. World War II lasted six years and a day, but the effects lingered long after. Color in World War II had one defined driver that impacted industries, communities across the world and well into the peace years. Such examples of this are rationing. When you think of rationing, do you perhaps imagine packages of canned food, wax paper wrapped biscuits, and even toilet paper? Rationing did not only pertain to meals, but also household goods and even fabric heavily altering the fashion and beauty in the early years of the war as no new products were permitted to be developed. However, clever marketing aligned themselves with this era's core theme of patriotism. Makeup is cherished, a last desperately defended luxury, said by Vogue in their magazine for 1942. patriotism and crisis of chaos of a war united nation in their devotion to protecting a particular place and a way of life. Art, entertainment, and media were heavily injected with these themes inherent to each nation. Propaganda is a theme that we have not directly addressed, but its notes have been threaded through each of these examples given for its crisis and how heavily propaganda shaped culture and colors of this time. To a more recent event, the Great Recession of 2008, the turn of the century brought a time of decadence in the culture and innovation in technology. Times were changing quickly, but there were vulnerabilities in the financial system, which made the devastation of 2008 an economic downturn, a memorable crisis even today. Color during this recession had unique influences when compared back to previous examples, starting with technology. We saw the launch of the App Store, funny enough to think of it, starting, several mobile devices, innovations which drew consumers towards screen. 59% of Americans turned to the internet to cope with the crisis similar to what we experience now. Using this outlet to also search for information about the origins or solutions to the national economic problems, leading to a deep desire and a trend we see in present days for accountability and transparency. So many questions were brought forth from events. And when looking back to see what colors were predicted for the year, seems incredibly on the nose. So this example here is Pantone's color of the year, blue lilac, and it was interesting to note that they were questioning themselves even in their branding. Entertainment, this trend driver encompasses the rise and fall of various celebrities in the spotlight, as well as the mishandling of mental health. With the increased pace and spread of the recession, greater attention was paid from consumers to public figures as a way of escapism, similar to what we saw in the 30s 
for movies. And lastly, we have gray, a category onto itself because of the span of time this trend has lasted. Gray punctuated into interiors in 2008 as we sought to protect ourselves. Fearful of the unknown and what was going to happen, individuals subconsciously withdrew to protect themselves. So colors throughout crisis, here we can see that it wasn't as bleak or as gray as we might have anticipated during these times. There was color. We heard Andrew talk about yellow being used for hope. It's a symbol all through all the years of crisis that we have looked at. Which leads us to the present. Unfortunately, we are once again in a time of crisis. So what has changed? First, let's think about how times have changed in such a short amount of time. As we continue to navigate through current changing landscape, there have been major changes in our daily lives. We are spending less money, but have more time at home. We are limited in our travel and our daily routine has been interrupted by the lockdown. So how can companies react to this new normal? Companies have been provided meaningful value for their core consumer. Some examples include special hours for at-risk groups, allowing early access to stores that have been restocked and deeply cleaned. There is also a priority access to both online through designated delivery slots and in-store through checkout lines. We have also seen the fear and anxiety take over. There has been stockpiling of common household goods that have led to shortages, most notably and unexpectedly toilet paper. To deal with this rush, stores have now rationed so that you can only purchase to ensure there is enough for everyone. Flattening the curve continues to be the key message. This can only be done through physical distancing leading to self-isolation and non-contact society. This change has really highlighted how rapidly business can fulfill online demands. Why companies react so quickly? The answer is simple. Thoughtful retail strategies are most likely to be remembered by consumers long after a crisis is over. Three drivers of change. This time will pass, but how can we stay ahead of the curve? Three drivers of change that are being brought to the forefront with this crisis, pure function, distance perception, and personal on demand. So now we're gonna go into a little bit about each of these categories. Pure function, the first driver, is driven by uncertainty, anxiety, and the fear that we are facing not only our health, but our finances as well. Pure function will be a key to cultural and generational concerns. There was a recent study done by Nestle, they found that while we were spending less, 49% of consumers were willing to pay a premium for products that are high quality and safe. Interestingly enough, in markets where COVID-19 have already had an impact, such as China and Vietnam, there was an increase of 10%. As we are staying home and carrying out household projects, Low or zero-free VOC paint, which may have been as an expensive choice, will now be the preferred choice. Pure function in the marketplace will be seen through three key changes. First, the economy is not doing well to dual-purpose items. Currently, we're seeing the rise of purified fashion. The photo is a design from a Japan that is using an activated charcoal fabric. The garments are resistant to odor, bacteria, moisture, and environmental chemicals. Paint was created to be dual purpose. It protects the surface while beautifying the space. There is even a new purpose being given to paint that is seen in the rise of antimicrobial paint. The global antimicrobial coatings market was valued at 2.4. 44 billion in 2015 and continues to grow rapidly. 
In the future, it will continue to be important for hygiene, critical environments such as hospitals, schools, and care homes. Next, with the reduced human contact, it will become increasingly important to communicate the benefits of products on the package. There will continue to be an increase in calming simplicity packaging known for its muted tones, matte textures, and minimal design. There's also a focus on making the consumer feel calm as they shop, but it does not stop there. Consumers also want to know how your product can help them create a sense of calm at home. Something to think about for in-store marketing strategies are what are you currently working on to enhance the sense of security and well-being of your clients while promoting a calm atmosphere. So for our Pure Function palette, we include Gentle Waterfall, a soothing blue, Elusive Dream, a, not, a cool tone off-white, Queen's Domain, a muted dusty rose, and Rich Tan. Our second key driver during this time of crisis is distant perception, which is how we interact with our world. It is being driven by the changes in society. Some examples of distant perception in the marketplace include clear messaging from marketing and privacy concerns. The message needs to be clear and reassuring. Honest, informative messaging is key while navigating a turbulent market. In terms of privacy, brands will need to respond with strategies that provide control to their consumer, giving them the option to share more or less. This market is about sharing, not trading. Fear will continue for consumers. They may choose to do all pur purchases from the comfort of their home moving forward. Screen-mediated relationships will be apparent in the way that we work and shop as the infrastructure to carry out tasks has been built quickly during crisis. Homes may rapidly become multi-purpose spaces for more households. Interior design will be a way to create purposes for the space. A dining room may no longer be just for mealtime, instead turn into an office space or teaching space for children. Lastly, low impact societies will become more popular. We continue to crave human interaction. Consumers will want to be in charge of those interactions. Once we return to public spaces, there will be a focus on business engaging with consumers in a more mindful way. To be truly prepared, one must think, how can your business be engaging in a mindful way and use colors that reflect a sense of comfort and safety. So our distant perception mar um, palette includes Cool Shadow, Terra Veil, Morning Song, and Sandy Smile. So a mix of warm and cools to approach people in a friendly manner. The last driver is personal on demand that is being driven by a sense of security. It is about a personalized market that empowers the consumer. Examples of personal on demand in the marketplace include thoughtful retail, personalized and positive contrib contributions. From continuing to care for at-risk groups, BOGOs or buy one, give one, will see a more caring and compassionate society that works towards the well being of all. The empowerment of the consumer. While it is not a new trend, it will continue to grow. As we live more connected lives, reducing barriers and increasing the points of access will give consumers the option to choose. Even once society overcomes COVID, low touch in stores will continue, but that will be important as its impact on brands will have on the consumer. We will see more brands giving the consumer the option to choose their in-store experience by opting in or out of human interaction. To prepare for this trend, 
it is important to think about how you can maintain an excellent level of service with little to no human interaction. So pure function palette includes iris in the wind, bountiful bay, carbon coal, and line in the sand. So that dividing line of what we did before and what we will do in the future, as well as that hybrid bright purple similar to what we've seen previously. So the palette all together and how we're going to be seeing the landscape continue to change as we navigate through this crisis. But three drivers will continue to come up to the forefront, pure function, distant perception, and personal on demand. Color will be important to consumers to create the calm atmosphere amidst all the chaos. No matter the color consumers are looking to achieve, Colorfall can be used in these scenarios. If you would like to stay ahead of the trends, Color Insights is the perfect choice for you. There are many member benefits, including access to an online platform, featuring exclusive galleries, early access to yearly trends, and on-site color seminars, similar to what we're presenting to you today. Alrighty then. So that wraps up our session. If you have any further questions about our subscriptions or special offerings by Color Insights, please email marketing at lorama.com or discuss this with your regional sales manager. Thank you again.